Well, here we are deep in the summer in the Northern Hemisphere and the world is looking kind of crazy out there. When you look on the internet or read the newspaper or watch the TV news, you start to see there's an upheaval going around this planet. Well, it's not a coincidence that all of this is happening right now for a simple reason. Human civilization has precipitated what is called the sixth mass extinction of life. We've undermined the web of life so much that we cannot support ourselves in this world. We're going extinct because of our behavior. And I go, well, what does that mean? I said, well, when you look at the world, uh, there are two ways you can look at it, and especially the way I perceive it, because one way I'm a citizen of the world. And when I look at the news, I was like, oh my God, I can't believe the craziness that we're experiencing. And yet on the other hand, if I put my white lab coat on, become the scientist and stand back and go, wow, everything is right on schedule. Everything is happening just right. And you go, how can you get these two different opinions? The answer is this. Science says we're facing a mass extinction. Human civilization has to recreate itself. The craziness that's going on is an important aspect of that new civilization because the civilization we have is destructive and we cannot build a sustainable civilization on this foundation. So what are we looking at? a destruction of an existing civilization, and a simultaneous creation of a new thrivable future. You probably have heard before the understanding that there's no such thing as a new story. To try to understand what's going on in our world today, I can tell you a story that actually replicates everything we're doing. It's called the metamorphosis of a caterpillar into a butterfly. The caterpillar is a multicellular organization where all the cells are individuals working together in harmony in the body of that caterpillar. But the caterpillar is a voracious organism. When put on a plant, it will eat every leaf off of that plant. It will destroy everything in its environment. And when it ends destroying its environment, it then goes into a cocoon in which a metamorphosis process ultimately creates a butterfly. And I say the difference is the caterpillar is the most voracious of organisms and the butterfly has the lightest touch on nature, perhaps doesn't even touch the ground through most of its life. And I say, so what's the relevance? I say, well, between the caterpillar and the butterfly, something's going on in that cocoon that relates to today's world. I go, well, what's going on? I say, well, if you're a cell in the body of that caterpillar and you look around at the caterpillars not eating, not moving, not doing anything anymore, you start to realize that the cells are losing their work. There are no more jobs. The cells are not doing anything. And the body of the caterpillar starts to fall apart and there's a soup of all these cells or individuals and a soup going on, what are we doing? And in that soup, there are individual cells called imaginal cells. The imaginal cells have a vision of a future, one where they could thrive into the future in community and in harmony. I say, so what? Well, the imaginal cells then guide the cells that are out of work, saying there's a better civilization available to us. And all the cells that were breaking down from the caterpillar and start to assemble into the new structure called the butterfly. Civilization at this moment is in the metamorphosis stage of a voracious, destructive civilization breaking down as the individuals start to assemble into a new, thrivable civilization for the future. Again, there's a situation about no new stories that we're playing an old story that repeats itself. The particular story I'm talking about involves the Netherlands. In the Netherlands, the land is so low to the sea level that the water generally would come on the land and flood it all the time. So the Dutch built dikes to hold back the sea so that they could utilize the farmland. One day, a boy passing by the dike notices a hole in the dike where water is streaming through. Well, the problem is, as the force of the water is streaming through, the hole starts to get a little bit bigger. Inevitably, this would cause the collapse of the entire dike, so the boy puts his finger in the dike to stop the water. And he sat there all day and all night until the next day people found him holding back the water. Well, the boy didn't change the world. What it did is just stop the falling apart of the world and this allowed the public to come together and build a better, stronger dike to hold it back. So in today's world, the dike that was holding us together in this community is beginning to fall apart. And are we gonna fix this overnight that the dike is fixed and tomorrow there's a new world? I say, no. First thing, we have to stop the leak. Once the leak is stopped, then we can build a new one. That's the mission that we're facing right now. 
So in today's disruption of civilization, is there any place we can go? And the answer is yes. It was already demonstrated by the government of Tunisia. Tunisia was the Arab country that precipitated the Arab Spring, where a man burned himself alive because under the pressures of the government he found he, as an individual, could not survive. It spread through the whole Arab region where people started to recognize they could not get ahead because of the oppressive leadership. And like Tunisia, threw out the dictators. Now the issue is this, Tunisia gets rid of its corrupt leader, but now has no constitution to live by. And so the prevailing parliament comes together to create a new constitution. And it failed day after day for a simple reason, because the polarized factors in the parliament kept fighting over their disagreements. And then everything changed on a very important day, and that was an election day. And I say, what was relevant? Because this is the first time women were introduced to the parliament. And with the attitude of women, the whole outcome of the parliament changed. Because the women said, why should we waste our time focusing on what we disagree on? We should first put together a government based on the things we do agree on. Rather than working on the disparities, coming together in unity led to the most effective and profound constitution of any country on this planet. So effective that the Nobel Prize was given to Tunisia for the creation of the most humanitarian form of constitution in the world. So as I close, I just want to leave one very important point. It's a choice. I could wear my citizen hat and go out there and go, <gasps> freak myself out, interfere my immune system with all the stresses. Or I could sit back and go, yeah, it's unfortunate, but it's necessary. Because without it, we will not evolve into the future. We must build a better system at the expense of taking down the system that is causing the problem. This is the most important step in the survival of human civilization. And that rather than focusing on the caterpillar, the voracious organism that's dying, it's time for us to put our energy into the organism that's being born. And that is the butterfly version of human civilization, where humans have the lightest touch on the planet and can support our environment rather than undermining it. So, yeah, I'm not gonna change the world, you know, just because I said that, but perhaps I can change your perception just enough, just enough to stop focusing on the negative because as we know in biology, the stress from that is actually enough to give you any disease and stress can kill you because 90% of illness on this planet is from stress. And if you look at the world, you can see why the planet has a healthcare crisis on its hands. It's time to let go of the stress. Let's focus on the vision of beauty and move forward because it's an unimaginable story that can unfold the creation of heaven on earth. <laughs>